Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, as you seen in the thumbnail, in this video we are gonna see. What if Naruto secretly married with Tamari, this is part 1, and if you want more then please leave a like, share and subscribe. Let's get in the video. Anoha Council Chambers. There was nothing but yelling behind the doors that held a meeting with the councillors of the village. It was mainly the civilians demanding for Suna to pay somehow for siding with one of the village's greatest enemies in history. We should execute some of the captured San Shinobi to show them our power over them. A civilian yelled. Are you stupid if we kill them that'll completely sever the bond we have with them. We should find a way to peacefully resolve this without having to have anyone die. Jiraiya said pinching the bridge of his nose. Why should we go for peace? They attacked us and killed our own right here in our home. A civilian retorted. Lord Jiraiya is right. Shikaku started, if all we do is respond with violence, it'll only spurn them to respond the same way, and we could start a fourth shinobi world war, and Kumo and Iwa wouldn't hesitate to jump in with Suna. Not to mention that Kiri is still having a civil war that they wouldn't help us. We'd be all alone against three great nations, do you honestly want to fight a slaughter? This got all of the civilians to shut up and process what he said. When I was a sensei with Minato on my team I told him how much I wanted to rid the world of all the evil and negativity there was. I passed on my dream to him to find a way, and he died believing in that dream, Hiruzen Sensei also believed this when he passed this ideology to me. There has to be a way to resolve this peacefully. Jiraiya said with complete seriousness, yet serenity in his voice. There has to be a way. Jiraiya said closing his eyes and thinking. Tsuna Council Chambers. The Sand siblings were standing outside of the chambers of their village's council, and all they could hear was shouting and yelling about what to do. They couldn't make out what was being said, not that it really interested them. They just lost a man who was their father, but kept them at arm's distance. All they had left was Baki, and seeing as he was serving as acting Kazikage, they were waiting for him to finish this meeting. Pankram, Tamari. Gara started with his raspy voice looking at the ground. The two older siblings looked at their baby brother in between them. I'm sorry. He said. Tamari and Kankram looked at each other, a soft smile graced both of their faces, knowing it was hard for Gara to even say this. They knew he wanted to say more about what he was sorry for, but he didn't need to. It was conveyed through those simple words. Tamari looked back at her brother smiling and softly said to him, it's okay Gara, we're just happy to finally have you back. The two gave him a short hug not really sure how they should act, considering they didn't grow up with love and affection being present at all times. Inside the chambers the yelling finally stopped and the doors opened, and everyone was giving Tamari a weird look as they left, but didn't say anything. After all the counselors left Baki was the only one in the room, and he didn't look too pleased with what transpired. Everything alright sensei? Kankram asked. No Kankram, things are going to change for our group. He said looking at the scroll before him. What do you mean? Tamari asked. Baki tossed the scroll to Tamari, and she undid it and read the contents, and her eyes grew wide seeing what he meant. Are you kidding me? This can't be real. Tell me you're joking sensei. Tamari yelled in anger and confusion. I tried my best to keep you, I'm sorry Tamari. It's final, there's nothing I can do about it. What are you talking about? Kankram asked. Our genius council has decided to marry me off to someone in Kanoha as an act of peacemaking. She yelled and Kankram's eyes grew wide. Is that even possible sensei he asked. Yes, it's an old way of making alliances with villages. The offsprings will have dual citizenship and the bride will be forced to move and live with her groom-to-be. And who am I supposed to be marrying? She asked. It's right there on the paper, one Naruto Uzumaki. The council was impressed by his performance in stopping Gara, and they found out that he's the Jinchuriki of the Nine-Tailed Fox that killed their fourth Hokage 13 years ago. They think with you being the daughter of the fourth Kazikage and him being a Jinchuriki, you two will have powerful children that will represent the bond between our villages. Baki explained to Tamari whose eyes grew wide. Naruto Uzumaki huh? He's nothing but a loud mouth brat, but I guess I could have gotten worse if the council would have scrapped through the bottom of the barrel into the dirt. She thought to herself. Go pack your things Tamari. You leave in one week if Kanoha accepts, and I expect them to accept the terms. I'm sorry Tamari. He said as he gave her a hug, for Baki it was like losing his only daughter. I will sensei. Tamari said hugging him back and doing her best to hold back tears. She immediately left for home and began preparing for her departure. Later that night Kanoha. Ureya was standing on top of the Hokage building when he saw a desert hawk fly up to him and land on the railing around the roof. Jiraiya cocked an eyebrow not expecting any message from anyone, and certainly not from where he thinks it's from. Suna. He thought as he walked up to the bird and took the letter off its back and let the hawk hop on his shoulder. 
Gareya quickly read through the letter and saw that it was a proposal from Suna about keeping peace. The best part about it was there would be no killing, which is exactly what Gareya wanted to avoid, and it seems like Suna just offered them an opportunity to do just that. He kept reading to see that they were offering up their own fourth Kazikage's daughter to be wed to none other than his own godson Naruto Uzumaki. You've got to be shitting me. Jiraiya said sighing out. The kid is not gonna be happy about this, but it seems like the only sure way to prevent a full war. I'm sorry Naruto. Jiraiya whispered as he turned to look at the giant stone head of his former student that he treated like a son. Sorry he couldn't find love on his own Minato. He said before walking inside and dropping the hawk off to the messenger tower. Next morning. Gureya had called the council to meet once again early in the morning. Once all the clan heads were there along with the civilian reps. Why are we here so early Master Gureya? Tsu asked yawning. Because we have a way to resolve our issue with Suna. He said getting everyone to wake up and listen in. Late last night a messenger hawk came up to me and it contained a letter from Suna. Suna is willing to offer up to Mari Sabaku to be wedded to one of our own shinobi. Gureya said getting the shinobi in the room to widen their eyes. But that method is ancient, no one practices that anymore. Chimza said. I know, but at the same time it's the best way to resolve things without killing anyone. Jiraiya replied. So who's she marrying? Shikaku asked. Obviously the Achea. A civilian said. Tsum just rolled her eyes and nonchalantly responded to them, when are you gonna hop off that kid's micropenis? It's always Achea this and Achea that with you civilians. Why are you guys even here this doesn't concern you? The clan heads all had their eyes wide as Tsum finally said what was on all of their minds, and they were trying so hard not to bust a gut. How dare you talk to me like that? The civilian retorted. You know Lady Inyazuka you make a valid point. Jiraiya said with a sinister tone. From here on I officially disband the civilian council. Get out. Jiraiya said with all seriousness. But what about issues involving everyday issues? Then you can bring it up to the clan head that's closest to you, and they'll resolve it. It's a good thing our clans are spread out across the village. We'll split up jurisdiction and if an issue happens you go to the clan head responsible for that area and they have authority to resolve it, of course the Hokage will have to approve it, but that way we don't have to waste time hearing you bitch and moan about the most minuscule shit. Jiraiya said. But. Bye bye. Jiraiya said waving his hand with a fake smile. The civilians all got up and left still in shock of what happened. Now back on topic, the shinobi Suna's council has picked to marry Tamari Sabaku is no other than my apprentice Naruto Uzumaki. Jiraiya said and the clan heads all nodded seeing that is a reasonable choice. Glad to know we can all see why they were impressed with him. He did splendid in the Chunin exams, much better than what most people thought. He beat one Niji Hayuga who everyone thought was going to wipe the floor with, then he proceeded to take down Gara, who unleashed the one-tailed beast, by summoning the toad boss Gamabunta, and then used a transformation jutsu to change Gamabunta to the Kaiubi. Kid has talent. So if we're all in agreement we'll send a letter back to Suna telling them we accept the terms of marriage between Tamari Sabaku and Naruto Uzumaki, who will be wed here and live here in Konoha. Jiraiya said and all the clan heads nodded in agreement. Well then we're done here. Jiraiya said as the clan heads got up happy to not have to listen to the civilian's bitch and complain for an extra few hours. It was nice to have quick meetings. Jiraiya left and headed out to Naruto to tell him the news after he quickly wrote up a response letter for Suna, telling them Kanoha was agreeing to the terms. Sorry to do this to you kid, but we need to start getting some peace into this world and it looks like it's gonna start with you. The white-haired sage thought to himself. Naruto woke up and got ready like he normally does, but something felt off to him. He quickly checked around the inside of his apartment and saw nothing out of the ordinary, but when he looked out to his balcony, he saw Jiraiya looking across the village. Curvy Sage. What are doing here so early? He asked. We've got some serious business to go over quickly Naruto. He replied and Naruto nodded before heading inside. They both took a seat and Naruto was hoping everything was alright and he wasn't in trouble. Kid your life is about to change drastically. Jiraiya started getting a confused look from the blonde. Suna sent a message yesterday that got here late last night. They offered a peace treaty of sorts, but it was in- What do you mean? Naruto asked. Long ago when countries would stop fighting and make treaties, normally the losing side would offer up a beautiful woman to become the bride of a male from the winning country. Suna lost to us so they're offering up one of their best if not the best kanoichi they have in Tamari Sabaku. The name sounds familiar. Naruto said. Ara's older sister. Jiraiya replied. Oh. Sandy blonde hair tied into four bun things. Naruto asked. Wields a giant fan. Yup that'd be her. Jiraiya finished. So who's the unlucky bastard this village has offered? Naruto said leaning back. Really Naruto? You haven't put two and two together. Jiraiya deadpanned. 
It took only a second before realization dawned on Naruto, are you fucking kidding me? Why me of all people? I mean I don't even know her let alone love her how the fuck am I supposed to keep peace and marry her if I don't love her Naruto yelled. I know kid, believe me I'd rather you find love on your own, but this is the only viable option right now to ensure war doesn't break out for the whole world. I'm really sorry Naruto. Jiraiya said trying to console the blonde. Why me? He asked dejectedly. Tsuna was impressed with how you beat Gara, and they think the offspring of your child and Tamaris will create a strong shinobi who will show the bond between our villages. So I'm just supposed to throw away my feeling for Sakura so I can be thrown into this marriage that's being done against my will. Unfortunately, yes. This is part of the shinobi life as ancient as this method is, it's a part of it. I'm sorry kid. Jiraiya said getting up and placing a comforting hand on his shoulder. The sucks. Naruto replied sinking into his chair. Yeah, it does doesn't it? The rest of the day Naruto tried to train, but he was too focused on this marriage he was being sentenced to that even Kakashi noticed he wasn't his normal. He wasn't hitting on Sakura, he was barely focusing on training which was very unusual for the blonde who always spouts about being the future Hokage. Naruto are you okay? Kakashi asked. Yeah, just processing some stuff Pervy Sage told me. He said. HN, well whatever it is if you don't feel up to training why don't you go home? Same goes for you too, training is finished for the day. Kakashi said and Sasuke immediately turned to leave, and Sakura began chasing after him, but it felt different since a certain blonde wasn't trying to ask her out, instead he was heading to his own home. Naruto trudged his way home not sure of what to make of his new upcoming situation, and it frustrated the hell out of him. Naruto eventually made it home to where he found Kakashi leaning against his door, not reading his pervy novel which piqued Naruto's interest. No porn for you Kaka-sensei. What's going on Naruto? You haven't been yourself recently and it's obvious, want to talk about it over a bowl or Raymond? Kakashi asked knowing the blonde couldn't turn down Raymond. Sure, Raymond sounds pretty good right about now. Naruto said cracking a small smile. Ichiraku Raymond stand. As Naruto and the copy ninja were eating Naruto began telling him what he recently found out from Jiraiya. Damn, sorry to hear that Naruto. Well I guess on the bright side this won't really be official until a new Hokage is appointed. Kakashi said. Which is why we're going to find her. Jiraiya said entering the stand. Master Jiraiya, good to see you again. Kakashi said nodding his head. Same to you Kakashi. The sage replied. What do you mean we're getting the next Hokage? Naruto asked. Well you and I are going to go on a trip to bring back the next Hokage, and while traveling we're going to up your training. Jiraiya said which got Naruto to really perk up. Really you mean it pervy sage? Naruto said getting hyper again. Yup, pack your things, we leave in one hour. Jiraiya said vanishing to probably get one last peek for his next novel. I gotta go Kaka-sensei, see ya. Naruto said taking off immediately. Later. Kakashi said with an eye smile before he looked and noticed that Naruto never paid for the food. Naruto. Get back here and pay for your ten bowls. Kakashi yelled but sighed knowing it was no use. He. Oh Minato-sensei if only you were here to see yours and Lady Kashina's son. He's so much like the both of you. Kakashi said as he finished his third bowl and paid for Naruto as well before he began wandering around the village and managed to end up at the memorial stone. Seems like I always end up here. Kakashi thought with his hands in pocket. Suna. Inside the Suna council chambers they had received word that the leaf had agreed to the term set forth in the marriage proposal, but finalization would have to come from their god aim Hokage, which Jiraiya and Naruto were currently searching for. Well seems like Tamari is going to be leaving soon. Baki thought to himself. Baki headed out to find Tamari and saw that she was training with her siblings at their family training ground. Baki sensei what's up? Kankram asked. Well Kankram we just received word from the leaf that they accepted the terms, Tamari will be wedded to Naruto Uzumaki. Of course it won't be official until they've appointed a new Hokage, but by then we'll be in the village to meet with the new Hokage and iron out some finer details. I'm sorry Tamari. Baki said looking at the young blonde trying to see her reaction. All she did was sigh and turn to finish packing things up. I'll be in my room if anyone needs me. Tamari said putting her fan on her back and leaving. Time skipped three days. Naruto and Jiraiya had finally made it to Tenzaku town, and Naruto had progressed much faster at the Rasengan than Jiraiya expected, with Naruto blasting through stage 1 in one day, then then he managed to get through stage 2 today. So what's next pervy sage? Next is combing them and maintain it. You'll use a water balloon again, but the goal is to not burst it yet still have the rotation and power with it. The balloon is merely just a visualization for you to know what the Rasengan is supposed to look like. Jiraiya said as he formed one in his hand. Got it. 
Naruto said as he quickly took the bag of balloons and began working hard while Jiraiya slipped away into town to find any clues on his missing teammate, plus it gave Naruto plenty of time to train and focus. Nightfall. By nightfall Naruto had slowly managed to figure it out, even though he couldn't maintain it long enough he was able to get it going for about 5 seconds before his concentration broke. I wonder. Naruto thought before crossing his fingers for his favorite jutsu. Shadow clone jutsu. He yelled and he looked at his copy before holding out his palm, while his clone began shaping the chakra by moving his hands in different direction to create the shape of it. To the surprise of Naruto he was finally able to make the Rasengan and maintain it thanks to his clone. Naruto then charged at a tree and put a spiral dent in it and left it scarred. Perfect. Now I gotta find Pervy Sage and tell him. Naruto said as he rushed into town and managed to find Jiraiya still searching for his teammate. Hey Pervy Sage I got down the Rasengan. Naruto yelled out and the women immediately glared in the direction of Jiraiya who grabbed Naruto and sprinted away, avoiding the mob of angry women before he cut into a pub to try and hide out for a minute before continuing his search. You idiot don't say call me that out in the open. Jiraiya said glaring at him. Come on. Jiraiya said turning around and noticing huge breasts on a young blonde. Tsunade. Jiraiya yelled pointing at her. Jiraiya. Tsunade replied standing up after slamming her hands on the table. Come on kid. Jiraiya said pulling Naruto into the booth that Tsunade and Shizune were occupying. Ah pervy sage there's no way this blonde is your teammate, she's too young looking. Are you sure you're not just trying to hook up in front of me again? Naruto said squinting his eyes at him. Hmm, seems your apprentices get shorter, uglier and dumber, looking Jiraiya. Tsunade said taking a sip of sake. The hell did you say to me? Naruto said turning his attention to the busty blonde. You heard me brat. She said taking a swig straight from the bottle. Naruto clenched his fists to the point where his nails were cutting his palms open. Oops, did I offend you? Tsunade asked mockingly while smirking. Naruto stand down. Jiraiya said firmly while looking at his teammate. You know about Saratobi sensei right? You know that Orochimaru attempted to decimate the village with the hidden sand, and he killed Sensei. Jiraiya said trying to get a reaction from Tsunade. Orochimaru told me the other day. He also made me an offer. He said something about healing his arm Sensei sealed away in exchange for Nawaki and Dan coming back. Tsunade said calmly not showing any sadness for the death of her Sensei. You know that he won't do it. Even if he does it's not like they'll actually be here, they're gone Tsunade, I'm sorry, but they're gone as gone as as gone as who. Minata your failure of a student who couldn't even last over a year being Hokage. You know that's why you're here isn't it? You want me to come back home to take over as Hokage. Well you can forget it. Only a fool would take that stupid title to only throw their life away. Tsunade yelled before quieting down to a near murmur. Just shut up already. Naruto yelled punching the table in half. I don't care what you think of anyone anymore, but don't you dare disrespect the Hokages and what they've done. Enough Naruto. You don't even know Tsunade. She's practically royalty. Jiraiya yelled back. What? She's the granddaughter of the first, grandniece of the second, student of the third, and a very distant in-law of the fourth. She's somehow related to every Hokage in history. Jiraiya said. I don't give a shit if she is. She's still a Konoha native and should at least respect it. Naruto said. Tsunade got up and started walking out, but spoke to the young blonde, you and me, outside, now. She said. Naruto got up knowing damn well what was about to happen. Shizune also got up and quickly healed Naruto's hands to erase the blood and cuts. Thank you. He said before walking out with Jiraiya in tow. All I need to beat you is one finger, so show me what you've got, brat. Tsunade said not even getting in a stance, but Naruto got in a stance ready to throw down. The leaf was blowing in the wind, and the second it touched the ground Naruto charged straight and cocking back his arm for a punch, but Tsunade merely sidestepped and brought her left leg high up, before bringing it straight down on his back, making him slam into the ground and creating a crater. In a dark place. Grumbling. Red slitted eyes open up and the low grumbling was heard, what's that idiot doing now? Real world. Naruto coughed up blood in the crater and was slow to get up, but managed to and saw Tsunade smirking. You're pretty tough to handle that kick, but let's see just how much more your body can handle. I'll keep going and I won't quit, cause I'm gonna become the Hokage one day. I guarantee it. Naruto said with pure determination as he began to increase his chakra output to the point where a visible blue aura surrounded his body. He's got way too much chakra for a normal gen in his age. What the hell is he Jiraiya? Tsunade thought to herself as the young blonde made a shadow clone and it began moving its hands around his open palms like he was trying to form something. What the hell is he doing? The busty blonde thought before she started to see a blue ball of condensed chakra form in his palm. Are you crazy teaching him that Jiraiya? She yelled out knowing damn well what it was. Hey. Your fight's with me. 
Naruto said charging in with a Rasengan with greater speed since he's enhancing his body with chakra. Brace and Naruto started to yell out before Tsunade slammed one finger into the ground creating a divide and Naruto's foot got caught in it, causing him to lose concentration and his footing as the Rasengan slammed into the ground but leaving a good-sized crater with swirling burn marks in the middle. You taught him an air rank assassination jutsu, are you stupid? Tsunade yelled at Jiraiya. He was ready for it, besides he's nearly perfected it in just under one week. Jiraiya said proudly. That doesn't matter, and besides there's no way he'll learn to control it, he's got too much chakra to handle. Tsunade said. He'll get it. Jiraiya said looking at Naruto who got up and was scuffed up a bit. Hine, hey brat come here. Tsunade said to Naruto. What do you want, is winning not enough for you? He said not looking her in the eyes. Tsunade grabbed his chin lightly and made him look her in the eyes, since they were both 5-5. Five five. Let's make a bet. I bet that you can't master the Rasengan in one week. If you do I'll come back with you and become your Hokage, if not you two leave me the hell alone and never search me out. Got it. Tsunade said as Naruto jerked his head away so she wasn't holding his chin. I'll do it in less than one week. Naruto said with fire in his eyes. Hine you have four days then. Better get to work. Tsunade said. And you better get your measurements ready. Naruto snapped back but found Tsunade's fist slamming into the crown of his head. Don't ever ask for my measurements again you pervert. She said. The hell you asshole, I was talking about your measurements for the Hokage robes and crap that the old man had to wear, what were you thinking of? He said nursing his head as Shizun helped heal him. Wait you weren't talking about my breasts. She said blushing lightly. Of course not. Why would you need to measure them, everyone can see they're fucking huge, no need to measure them. Fuck that hurt. Well just remember the bed idiot. Shizun come on. Tsunade said as Shizun finished healing up Naruto and soon left with her master, but of course Jiraiya had to say something. If you won't give the kid your measurements could I get them? Just like Naruto Tsunade clocked the pervert in the head and beckoned Shizun to follow, saying he'd be fine. Idiot pervert. Naruto said. Shut up brat. Jiraiya snapped back. Well I guess I better start training again. Naruto said getting up and walking off to find a good area to train in. After about a half hour of walking around the forest surrounding the town, Naruto found a nice clearing with plenty of trees to hit alone with a nice little river flowing into a good-sized pond. Before Naruto started he sat down on a boulder and stared up at the full moon. It's beautiful. He whispered to himself. Suna. It's beautiful. Tamari said looking up at the full moon shining its reflective light down upon the village lighting it up. Guess this is gonna be the last time I see the moon this clearly for a long time huh? Tamari asked to no one in particular before sighing and pulling her knees closer to her chest and resting her face on them. Hanzaku Town. Tsunade was out getting another drink at a stand when Jiraiya also popped in to chat. Mind if I join? Jiraiya said more than asked as he sat down and was brought a bottle of sake and a small saucer. Why would you teach that idiot something so complex like the Rasengan, it's not like he'll master it. Tsunade said. I believe in the kid because of who his parents are, I mean his father did create the damn thing, so I think Naruto has every right to learn it. So, he's the brat of your student huh? Who's the mother? Tsunade asked. Your distant cousin and second Jinchuriki after your Mito Bach and Kishina. Jiraiya said taking a sip and sighed looking to see that Tsunade's eyes widen, but immediately returned to normal, so she didn't look too surprised. So he's the product of those two huh? Still either way there's no way he'll master it. Tsunade said. He's just like them you know, more like Nawaki in my humble opinion, but he's just like them. They wanted to become Hokage so badly, and Naruto does too. He truly believes he'll become Hokage, and then everyone will finally stop looking at him like he's the fox, and I believe him. You're putting too much into the brat, he's no prodigy. Tsunade retorted. Maybe not, but neither was I and look how I turned out. The pervert. Since day one, but I mean that I've become one of the strongest ninja our home has produced next to you and Orochimaru, I think we honestly made one of the strongest and most well-rounded teams in Konoha history. You shouldn't judge him too harshly, cause he tends to surprise you when you least expect it. So keep doubting him, and he'll definitely become Hokage. Jiraiya said taking another sip. For the next few minutes they sat in silence just drinking and silently and secretly enjoying the familiar company. After a while Jiraiya broke the silence. Tsunade, that offer Orochimaru made you. As much as you say that you hate Kanoha, I know you truly don't, but if you accept that offer, I'll kill you without batting an eyelash understood. Good night Haim. Jiraiya said putting his finished alcohol down and leaving for a hotel. Over the next few days Naruto was training as hard as he could on mastering the Rasengan by having one clone form it and another clone try to create a distraction, forcing him to focus while he slams it into a tree. 
Over those days Tsunade was keeping tabs on him and began to realize that Jiraiya was right, he really did resemble Dan and mostly Nawaki. It made her wonder if he really could be able to achieve his dream of becoming Hokage. Tsunade began thinking over what Jiraiya had said to about him actually killing her if she betrayed the village and helped Rachimaru. Would he actually do it, the old perv has been in love with me for years, does he really have the balls to do it? She whispered to herself as she walked around Tenzaku. The four days finally passed and back in Suna Tamari was forced to ride by carriage as per Suna tradition when marrying off one of their own in a marriage treaty. To say Tamari was upset would be an understatement, she knew it was tradition, but she felt like her pride as a Kanoichi was taking a hit by being forced to act like a princess when she damn well knew she wasn't a real princess. Nevertheless, she bit her tongue and stayed silent but did enjoy the moments whenever Kankram would poke his head in and see how she was doing. From what he was hearing they were still three days out from Kanoha, since the trip that would normally take a shinobi three days was taking twice as long due to the slow pace the carriage was set at. Back in Tanzaku town we find Jiraiya asleep at a Raymond stand and Naruto bedridden from training his ass off to perfect the Rasengan to no avail. Naruto couldn't maintain the chakra long enough to be able to focus, even if a distraction happened causing him to always lose it, but he worked himself to the bone and paid the price with chakra exhaustion. The shop owner tried waking up Jiraiya, but he was completely out of it thanks to Tsunade spiking his drink the other night when they went out again. Jiraiya trudged along after finally being woken up to realize that he can't mold much chakra and set out to find Tsunade's hotel room as best as he could. Meanwhile in said hotel room Naruto woke up to find Shizu knocked out and woke her up and the Mednin began to freak out wondering what day it was. After finding out she was amazed that Naruto had recovered so quickly but remembered that Naruto is the current Jinchuriki for the Nine Tails according to Jiraiya. We need to leave Naruto now. Lady Tsunade is leaving to make the deal with Orochimaru, we have to stop her from making the biggest mistake of her life. Right then let's go. Naruto yelled as they were just about to leave through the window, a kunai came flying right in front of Shizun's face and buried itself in the wall right next to her face. She looked to see who threw it and saw Jiraiya looking like he'd seen better days. She pulled one over me, she spiked my drink last night, that witch. Jiraiya said panting. Shizun ended up bringing him a pitcher of water to drink and after having a few glasses and getting all the details straight, they knew what they had to do. I can't believe you're going to make me actually kill you Tsunade. The white-haired sage thought. A.N. We all know how the rest of this goes, so I'm not gonna write out something we all know. In my opinion this fight is one of the top 5 fights from pre Shippuden Naruto, so I don't see a point in writing it out. Sorry if you wanted me to, but I just don't feel the need to. Time skip. Naruto, Jiraiya, Shizun, Tantan and Tsunade were making their way back to Konoha after finally defeating Orochimaru and his lackey Kabuto. And by making their way, I mean they were sprinting as fast as they could since Jiraiya just happened to remember that they were on a strict deadline to try and beat out the group from Suna. Luckily for them they made it to the village and were welcomed with positivity, seeing as how people were happy to see their future Hokage for the first time. Not to rush, but we need to get Naruto to be presentable. Jiraiya whispered to her. You're right. Tsunade replied as she waved to the people who were very happy to see their next leader finally return home. The Sanin and Naruto with Shizun quickly stopped by the Hokage office so she could finish checking him for any injuries and after assessing that he was perfectly fine. She nodded to Jiraiya, who pulled out a beautiful silk kimono that was all black, with an orange yuzu swirl on the back being formed by three tails of the nine-tail fox, while the other six tails were evenly divided, fanning out behind the swirl. This thing looks so cool. I mean I'd put more orange on it, but I actually like it. Thanks, pervy sage. Naruto said hugging the toad sage and the old man could only smile and return the hug as Tsunade watched on smiling, they kinda are like father and son, maybe grandfather and grandson is more like it. Now come on kid, we gotta get you to the front gates to meet your future wife, don't want to make a bad impression. Jiraiya said as Naruto quickly changed into the kimono. How do I look? Naruto said to Jiraiya and Tsunade. You look good kid. Jiraiya said grinning. Like you're ready to get married. Tsunade replied with a friendly smirk. Out on the road. Hey sis, I can see the gates, we're almost there. Kenkram said to Tamari who began to try and clam herself and slow her breathing. Relax, you can do this Tamari, you're a natural warrior, you can handle anything. Hanoha. Naruto was quickly rushed to the front gates by two of the Sanin and Shizun, which began drawing a crowd seeing Naruto in something other than his bright orange jumpsuit. Great the whole village is coming out here. Can't they just go away? Naruto muttered. Relax, it'll be okay Naruto. Jiraiya said putting a hand on his shoulder. Less than 10 minutes later the Suna caravan finally arrived to the gates. Greetings and welcome to the village hidden in the leaves, I'm Tsunade send you the goddamn Hokage and it's an honor to welcome friends from the hidden sand to our home. 
Tsunade said very professionally which took Naruto by surprise as he leaned over to Jiraiya and whispered, since when can Bachan be professional? He, since always kid. Jiraiya replied with a smile. I swear this kid keeps me feeling young, but man can he also make me feel old as dirt. Damari stepped out of the carriage dressed in a black kimono with sandy colored wind swirls on it, with a red sash being tied in the back, and her usual battle fan was nowhere in sight, instead she had two smaller ones tucked away in her sash. The two blondes that were to be wedded had their breathes taken away not realizing that the other could look so good in nice clothing. It's nice to see you again Tamari. Naruto said with a smile that made Tamari lightly blush. It's nice to see you too Naruto. Gara and Kankram also walked up and seeing Gara put a big smile on Naruto's face. Hey Gara, how you been? Naruto practically yelled out getting the majority of the crowd to face fault. Act professional idiot. Jiraiya scolded. It's not like I've done this before pervy sage. Naruto snapped back showing just how close the two were, which put a small smile on Tamari's face. These two are going to be an interesting combo. Or the death of me. She thought. Alright, why don't we all go to the office and sort out details while arranging where you will stay and getting Tamari sworn in. Tsunade said as she led the group to her new office. Office. Now while I can't officially do anything until three days from now when I'm officially announced as Hokage, I can at least get things in order so we can proceed immediately after taking the mantle. Tsunade said as they went over finer details of the marriage contract and visitation and citizenship rights and whatnot. After ironing out everything everybody left except Naruto who was told to stay after. Everything alright Bachan? He asked. Naruto, since you're getting married I feel that it's only right that you know about your heritage and what happened the night you were born. Tsunade said which got Jiraiya to perk up. Naruto the night you were born the Kaiubi attacked the village and since you were the only one in the village born that night, you were the only possible candidate to become the next host of the Nine Tails. Plus your mother being who she was also made it easy to chose you. Tsunade started. Who was she? Tsunade took out a picture of his mother and handed it over to Naruto, and it was a picture of Kashina Uzumaki pregnant with Naruto. What's her name? He asked. Kashina Uzumaki, in so many ways you resemble her, mainly your manners and characteristics and personality. She was one of the strongest Kanoichi this village has seen, she was even considered to possibly be a Hokage if she never got pregnant and if the fourth Hokage never took over. Tsunade added. Jiraiya put a hand on Tsunade's shoulder, letting her know that he would cover the information about his father. Alright kid now comes the part about your father. Let me start with this, don't interrupt until I'm finished got it. Now because of who your father is and the enemies he made I can't tell you until you're much stronger than you are now. Seeing as how only I really know how strong you are, I'll tell you who he was when I deem it correct to tell you. But I will say this, in the short time they were able to see you I know for a fact they loved you immensely. Naruto. Tsunade said. Naruto looked at Tsunade. Yeah. I'm sorry about Kishina, but I know she and your father would be proud of the man you're becoming, and they'd be proud of you stepping up to such a task as marrying to keep peace. I know you'd rather take your time and marry for love and not politics, but hopefully you and Tamari will find love in each other. Tsunade said. Tsunade then got up and hugged Naruto before giving him a kiss on his forehead. If you ever need anything I'll be right here. She said softly as he nodded and looked at the picture again. Did they have a home ready for me? He asked. Yeah, I'll take you to it. Jiraiya said looking to Naruto and then Tsunade who nodded to him silently say that they were done. The walk to Naruto's new home was one filled with silence and a lot of thinking by Naruto. Well here we are. Jiraiya said as they came up to the metal gate surrounding a 20-acre plot of land. The house was set back a bit with a long walkway leading up to the front door. I know this place. Naruto said with eyes wide like he's seen a ghost. You do? The sage asked. I would hide here during the fox hunts when I was younger, they'd beat me until I bled, and when I would get away I'd run here and the gates would open for me, but no one else. Naruto said. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you during those times kid. Jiraiya said. It's alright, it made me get better at evasion and stealth. Always a plus to something I guess. Naruto said before biting his finger and smearing the blood on one of the metal bars and the gates opened up allowing the two on the property. Naruto walked inside to see that everything was covered in dust and there was a thin layer of it hanging in the air. How the hell am I gonna get this dust out of the air? Naruto asked. Well I guess for now just open up the windows and let the air currents do their thing. Jiraiya suggested. Naruto made some shadow clones to find all the windows in the house and open them up. After they finished their task they dispelled and Naruto suddenly remembered the entire layout of the house. Hey pervy sage, why do I know the entire layout? Oh, so you finally noticed the secret of the shadow clones. Once they dispel you retain all the memories they made. It makes it the perfect jutsu for stealth and reconnaissance. You can gain intel, the clone will dispel, and you'll get the info without putting your life in danger. 
Jiraiya said. Hmm, never really noticed before. Well, why don't we let the air do its thing while we go out for some food, my treat. Sounds good. Naruto said with a grin as they turned and walked out locking up the property and headed to Ichiraku's to try and beat Naruto in eating the most bowls of ramen. When nightfall arrived Naruto met up with Tamari and her brothers to see how they were doing. How's everything been so far? The blonde asked. Well other than getting some glares, called traitors, and cursed it pretty good. Tamari replied. I'm sorry for the way they're treating you guys. They don't understand what's going on, plus you'll probably be getting more of it once you're really associated with me and our marriage becomes public. Naruto said. Why do you say that? Tamari asked. Naruto paused for a minute considering if he really wanted to tell her who he was. After a little bit of thinking he thought that he had nothing to lose. You mind if we walk and talk about it? He asked. Sure. Tamari replied bringing her two small fans with her. The Tamari they were just walking around aimlessly while receiving glares, but she noticed most weren't even towards her, they were towards the young man she was gonna be marrying soon. I don't know if anyone told you this Tamari. Gara and I are more alike than you may realize. He started. He must be talking about the fox. She thought. How so? She asked. Well Gara is a jinchuriki for the one tail Shikaku right? He replied. Yeah, since he was in our mother's womb he was the jinchuriki. She said. Well I'm also a Jinchuriki like Gara, except the beast that lives in me is much stronger, and by that I mean it's the strongest tailed beast known to every living person. I hold the nine-tailed fox, Kaiubi. Naruto said. I knew it. She thought to herself. Naruto looked over to see her reaction, but she didn't seem surprised in the slightest. You're not surprised. Not really, there was a small detail about you possibly being the Jinchuriki, but you just confirmed it. She said. When I was little they would hold an event called the Fox Hunt. Angry villagers and shinobi would hunt me down to try and finish what the fourth hokage started. They would beat me with anything they could find, carve names into my chest and abdomen, stab me, burn me, I've even had acid eat my skin, I've been whipped, and just about any other form of torture has been performed on me, yet every time the one who saved me was the fox by healing me. Naruto said. They did what Tamari yelled out shocked and angry. She may not know Naruto at all, but the fact that he shared with her this information means he's at least trying to open himself up and trust her with a secret, and she was furious with the villagers. Why didn't you tell the Hokage? I did, nothing got done. He tried his best, but there wasn't much he could do. It's not like he could constantly watch over me 24-7 to make sure an idiot didn't try to take my life or anything. I'm not mad about it or anything, eventually I got so good at hiding and evading them that for the last five years they haven't done anything. Naruto said before coming to a stop before some large metal gates. We're here. He said. Here? She asked. My parents' home, or rather our home now. He said. Look, Tamari, I don't expect you to ever fall in love with me cause to be honest, I don't know if I ever will. We're both doing this because our villages asked us to, but I want you to know that from now on, you're family to me, and I'll die protecting you. Naruto said giving her hand a quick squeeze before letting go. Come on, I'll give you a quick tour. I hope you know a little about gardening because everything here has been dead for years. Naruto said after swiping some of his blood on the metal bars and they began walking up the path to the front door. Fair warning, I opened all the windows because of how much dust was hanging in the air earlier today, so I don't know if it's all gone or not. Naruto said. How bad can it really be? Tamari asked sarcastically before her jaw dropped seeing just how much dust was still hanging in the air. Seems like none of it left. Naruto said. Well, I think I can help with that. Wine style. Air current dance. Tamari yelled swinging her two small fans, and a blast of wind came out and forced the dust through the nearest windows until it all got blasted outside and formed a dust cloud hanging in the air. One more to get it all away from us. She said preparing for another jutsu, wind style. Great breakthrough. Tamari yelled swinging her fans upwards to blast the dust high up into the sky where it can separate and flow freely in the passing wind. Naruto looked on amazed at her abilities and he control over her wind style. Tamari noticed him looking at her causing her to blush a little, what? She asked. Sorry, you're just really amazing at wind style. I mean I know you're amazing, I saw you during the Chunin exams, but that was all for offensive purposes, I didn't know you could do something like this. He said stumbling through his words. Thank you Naruto, why don't we head on in and you can show me around huh? She asked as he nodded and began giving her the grand tour, while each of them made mental notes on what they wanted to fix up. After checking everything out they walked out front and out of the gates. Well, I guess tomorrow I'll be working on fixing up the place, I'm sure you'd rather spend time with your brothers, so I'll get everything ready by tomorrow night. Naruto said with a small smile. 
I spent all of today with them including the trip over, so how about I spend the morning with them, and then I'll drop by with lunch, and we can work together, since it's not just your house now, it's going to be mine too. Tamari said with a friendly smirk. Sounds good. I'll walk you back to your hotel. Naruto replied. You know I can take care of myself right? Tamari asked with a raised eyebrow. I know, I just don't trust people late at night to not do anything to you. Technically you're still a sand ninja, and they most likely won't accept you for a while, maybe even never since you'll be associated with me, and they seem to hate me for nothing in my power. Naruto said walking with his hands on the back of his head. I guess you're right. It's not fair to you though. Tamari said looking at him. Well what can you do, it's not like I can change everyone's opinion of me right now. But I'll change their opinions one day, and when I become Hokage I'll prove them wrong. He said with such determination that it reminded her of the Chunin exams with the balls he had with his statements. Well if that's the case then I'm gonna be stuck with keeping you out of trouble, aren't I? Tamari asked sarcastically. Yup, so get used to it and have fun doing it. Naruto said smiling at her causing Tamari to blush a little. Baka. She said under her breath. The rest of the week went pretty smooth with Naruto and Tamari just fixing up what's to become their home. Soon the home was finally repainted, refurbished, looked up to date, and to the liking of the two blondes. There was only one thing that Naruto wanted to add that he never told Tamari about. Elsewhere Tsunade went to heal Kakashi and Sasuke from the mental damage, while also trying to figure out a way to heal Lee from his spinal injury, on top of being officially named as the Hokage. So for Tsunade it was a very busy week running around, but she always made sure to check in on Naruto and Tamari to make sure everything was alright, since their relationship determined the peace between the leaf and sand. In the next few hours Tamari's brothers and sensei would be heading back to their village, leaving behind one of their own. While Tamari was looking around the house and more just to familiarize herself, Naruto was able to slip away to meet up with Gara to do him a favor. On the way to his home Naruto filled in Gara on what he wanted done as a final touch. Soon they arrived to the house where Naruto invited Tamari to some lunch at Ichiraku's which she accepted, since she had heard him talk about Ichiraku a bunch, but never indulged herself, so she thought she'd try it. Ichiraku Raymond stand. Hey old man, can I get two Maizo Raymonds? What do y'all want? Naruto asked. Um I guess I'll just have whatever you normally get. Tamari said. I'll do the same as you Naruto. Gar replied. Make it four. Naruto exclaimed. You got it Naruto. Tucci said as he and his daughter Aum began cooking up the ramen. Right when the bowls got served to them Tsunade, Kakashi, Iruka and Jiraiya all walked in and took a seat while ordering the same bowl as Naruto. Lady Hokage. It's nice to see you again, and same to you Master Jiraiya. Tamari said nervously not expecting this group to show up. Relax we're just here to enjoy some good ramen. Jiraiya said. Great ramen pervy sage. Naruto replied. Stop calling me that brat. Anyways like my idiot teammate said we're just here to enjoy some ramen. Tsunade said slurping down some noodles. After Naruto and Gara finished Tsunade spoke up. Do you boys mind leaving us with Tamari for a minute? Tsunade asked a little too sweetly which Naruto picked up on. Instantly Naruto and Gara popped into smoke, leaving Tamari surprised as hell. They were clones. I'm gonna kill that jerk. Tamari yelled. Damn even I didn't know they were clones. Jiraiya said. He does have moments of brilliance. Kakashi said. Anyways we just want to have a quick chat with you Tamari. Tsunade said getting everyone's attention in the stand. Naruto's home. Okay we got some time so go ahead do your thing. Naruto said and Gara made a giant desert of sorts in an area of the backyard with some sand dunes to make it feel more realistic. Thanks Gara, I think she's gonna love it. The blonde said. Just remember what Kankaram and I said. Gara replied. Don't worry, I'll protect her with my life. Naruto said. Good. The redeed replied. Ichiraku Raymond stand. Now Tamari what we're about to tell you may scare you a little or maybe make you nauseous. Tsunade said slapping down a thick manila folder. What's in it? She asked. Open up and find out. Jiraiya said sipping on some tea. Tamari opened it and saw that it was Naruto's full medical history. Everything he told her was in the folder and things he didn't mention were in there. Photos and very descriptive paragraphs painted a nightmarish picture for Tamari and for the first time in a while, she began to tremble. It was slight, but it was still visible. Why? Why are you making me read through this, why am I seeing this? Tamari asked shaken. Because everyone here cares deeply for that boy. He's been to hell and back more than the devil himself. You need to know what you're getting into. The Naruto that's been showing himself isn't the real Naruto. Jiraiya said. What do you mean the real Naruto? She asked. When you've been thrown, kicked, stabbed, burned, and everything else in that folder, right to death's door, you tend to hide your true emotions and feelings from everyone. But he put on a mask if you will, to hide those emotions and feelings. 
He's a sweet boy for doing that when you think of it. Sunaid said sipping some sake. The fact that that boy still tries to put a smile on everyone's face even when he can't give a real one says something about him. He doesn't want anyone to go through what he did. So he chooses to hide behind a mask and it's fooled just about everyone except those of us here. Kakashi finished. Welcome to the club. Jiraiya said slurping on some noodles. So what am I gonna see once I start living with him? Tamari asked. Who knows? Haruka said pipping up. That boy can still be a mystery even to me. Anger. Jiraiya started getting everyone's eyes on him and Kakashi knew exactly what the Toad Sage was talking about. Anger, fear, doubt, regret, jealousy. He feels so many emotions on any given day yet hides it all in front of everyone. But once he's alone it all comes pouring out of him. I've seen him without his mask only a few times it ain't pretty to Mari. Jiraiya finished. So what should I do? She asked. Be there for him. Kakashi said, he's been through so many obstacles that I don't know if he even really wants to become Hokage anymore, but you need to be there for him in times of hurt and you need to support him no matter what. It's different with those of us being older than Naruto by a significant amount, save AM. If he was to have someone truly support him he can go on to do great things. The Cyclops finished. I understand. Thank you everyone. Tamari said bowing to them and clutching the folder to her chest. For professional reasons I'm gonna need to hold on to that folder, but just keep in mind everything you read and saw. Tsunade said. Yes, laddie. Tamari replied. Now, on to another topic. The wedding is going to be postponed. What? Hey, you better not die dummy, you've got to help me raise our kids you know. Tamari said smirking at Naruto. He's after all this time you still have no faith in me huh? Naruto replied back smiling. You tend to make it hard to. Tamari quickly remarked. No I think you make it hard. Naruto replied before turning to face the threat. Aka. Love you too Tima-chan. Naruto replied with a small loving smile, barely looking back out the corner of his eye. Just come back safe to me. She whispered to herself. I always have. And just like that Naruto disappeared. Normal timeline. Now, on to another topic. The wedding is going to be postponed. What? Everyone in the noodle booth was surprised at Tamari's outburst. What the fuck do you mean the wedding is postponed? Did I travel here for nothing? Pretty mu ugh. Jiraiya started before Tsunade swiftly elbowed him. Unfortunately the contract must be approved by two Kages, and seeing as we're the only one with a Kage in this arrangement we can't proceed until the sand has appointed a new Kazikage, not even a stand and can't sign off. It must be an official Kazikage, so yes and no to your question. Tsunade said without missing a beat. I can't believe this is happening to me. First I'm told to pack my things to leave my home to get married to someone I don't really know, settle in and try to adjust to a new life, and now I'm being told those plans have to wait. Things couldn't get worse. Actually they could. Jiraiya piped in. How's that? Tamari asked. Well Naruto could end up dead before the wedding and that would screw everything up. Jiraiya replied. Jiraiya. Tsunade yelled. Well it would get me out of this situation. Tamari mumbled. What was that? Tsunade asked sharply. Alright, now let's calm down for a second. We need to remember that Tamari is being put in a situation she never asked for. Yes, she's a Kage. Best child, but she didn't sign up for that life, so let's take it easy on her. Also she's only 18 and I'm sure she'd rather take her time to find romance instead of it being shoved down her throat and forced to accept it. Kakashi said while finishing another bowl of noodles. That is true. Haruka added. Tamari let out a small breath she didn't know she was holding and cracked a small smile at Kakashi and Aruka, who both just nodded discreetly. So you're right Kakashi and I'm sorry Tamari. Just remember the type of relationship I have with a boy, he's like family to me. Tsunade said. I understand Lady Tsunade and I promise to everyone I'll do what I can to keep him happy. Sigh so the big day is being put off, what's the plan until W. Suna finds the next Kazikage? Well your sensei talked with Yureya and I, and we've decided that the best way would require you to be the first shinobi who lives in two villages and works for that village while staying there. So you'll stay in the leaf for two months, then live in the sand for two months and keep switching. Aki wanted to make sure you can come home and relax for a good amount, but still have plenty of time to get adjusted to life here in the leaf. Tsunade answered. That actually sounds pretty nice. So I guess I'll start living here for two months, then? It's up to you cause either way you'll be switching. Tsunade replied. Can I take some time to think about it? Tamari asked. Of course, when you've got your answer you can come let me know. Tsunade said before getting up and walking out followed by everyone else. Tamari stayed for a while to think alone before she paid and left to go back to the house that she'll end up living in and raising a family in. Then hey exhale here goes something. She said pushing the gate open since it was left cracked open. 
she slowly walked through the front door and mentally tried to come to terms with things changing once again. Naruto. She called out but got nothing in return. Where the hell is he? She asked looking around before moving around the house to try and find him. Naruto, where are you? Geez where the hell could he be? She kept asking to no one in particular before something caught her attention out of the corner of her eye. Damari went out back to see a miniature desert in the backyard with Naruto giving her a smile. Whatcha think? Damari could only do one thing and that was cry tears of happiness. Did I do something wrong? Naruto asked. Damari just shook her head as she walked up to Naruto and gave him hug and this completely took him by surprise and he didn't really know how to react so he just did what instinct told him to and he hugged Damari back and buried his face in her neck. Thank you Naruto. She sobbed out with a smile on her face. This means so much to me, thank you. She said before letting go and wiping her tears away and still smiling at him. How'd you get so much sand here? I don't remember seeing any vendors. Ara. Naruto sheepishly replied. Of course. Well thank you again Naruto. Tamari said giving him a quick kiss on the cheek, making him blush. I'm inside, we need to chat real quick. Tamari said still smiling. Alright, it's nothing bad right? Depends how you see it. She replied taking his hand and leading him inside. They both sat at the dining table each with a glass of water and began the chat as Tamari called it. So apparently for us to get married two kages must sign off for it to become a legal marriage, but there's a problem with that. Damari started, Sinsuna has no kage for now the marriage has to be put on hold until the fifth kazikage is named, once that happens Lady Tsunade and the kazikage will convene and figure out a date that works. I'm sure we'll have input on the date too, but that's beside the point. So, what does that make us then? For once Tamari had no idea what to say, technically they're engaged, but that was because of an impending marriage, now that their marriage is being put off until further notice, she doesn't really know what to make of their relationship. Well, why don't we just take things in our own hands? Tamari said. What do you mean? Well let's not let some agreement determine what our relationship is. I know we're both doing this for the sake of our village, but we might as well do things on our terms, instead of letting others determine things for us. Tamari explained. So does that mean we're dating? Naruto asked. Well you haven't asked me out or anything so I'd say not quite yet. Tamari said giving him a teasing smile. Naruto blushed at what Tamari was insinuating and began fumbling through his words. So uh, w would uh w would you want to uh you know, go out as sometime or something. For someone who took on Gara with no fear and the confidence of the fiercest beast, he's so damn adorable when he has no idea what he's doing. The sand ninja thought internally smiling. I think I can find time in my schedule, but only on one condition. Absolutely no Raymond. Alright, fine. There's a pretty good restaurant in town, but I doubt they'll let us in. And why's that? She asked. Naruto just lifted up his jacket and shirt and channeled some chakra until his seal appeared. Oh right, furball. Tamari said. I'll see what I can do though. Naruto said. Good, well I'm gonna go take a shower and head to sleep. Tamari said turning and walking away with a little extra sway in her steps. Why the hell is she walking like that? Because of you idiot. She may not be in love with you, but she's gonna at least give you a shot at things. Karama replied. She is? The Jinchuriki asked. Yes, now her swaying her hips is to get your attention, because she knows that men love curves, and she has curves to spare, so she's gonna show off. She didn't ask for this situation, but she's trying to enjoy it. Karama said. Well I'll be. He thought watching her walk upstairs. Hey Naruto. Tamari called from the top of the staircase. Yeah? Everything okay? Which bathroom can I use? She asked. This honestly confused Naruto since to him he just figured she'd use the master bathroom, since they are gonna be sharing this house, the question was confusing to him. Um, it doesn't really matter to me. This is your house too so whatever you feel is right is okay with me. If you wanna get everything set up in the master bathroom you're more than welcome to. He replied. Okay, thanks. She replied as she went down the hall thinking about her options. I guess the obvious thing to do would be to take the master bathroom, I mean it's not called the master bathroom for nothing, but on the other hand I just got here and I don't know if it'd be appropriate for me to use that bathroom this early in our relationship. U-G-H-H-H, fuck me. She thought as she came to her conclusion. She settled on taking one of the guest bathrooms, since she isn't comfortable yet on being here and feeling like a guest, still she fell into that role. She was surprised to find out that the guest shower she used had no hot water, so that shower was very quick and not very helpful to relaxing her nerves. Once Tamari was finished she got dressed in a purple sleep tank that went to her mid-thighs and paired it with black sweepants that were a bit baggy and strolled downstairs to let Naruto know about the water situation. Hey Naruto, you might want to check the water heater. Why what's you? 
What are you, uh, what are you wearing to Mari? He asks Lodge Act. My pajamas. I bought them here since the tailors know the climate here better than the ones back home. Right. Naruto said dragging out the R. Anyways I was asking if you could look into an issue with a water heater because my shower was freezing cold. Uh, sure I can look into it, but I can't guarantee that I can fix it. He said. Why not? Well, I don't know anything about water heaters, actually I don't know anyone in the village who does. Naruto said trying to think of anyone who would have a clue. Why don't we check to make sure everything else is cold before I touch anything? Naruto offered to which Tamari nodded and after 35 minutes of checking every sink, tub and shower, except the master bathrooms they found that only freezing cold water was coming out. Well time to check out the master bath. Naruto said. Then let's get right to it. Tamari replied kinda liking spending time figuring something out with the man who's gonna end up marrying her. Again she didn't ask for this, but she may as well play nice and at least give him a fair chance before raising hell. After a couple minutes they were surprised to find that the master bathroom was the only room with hot water coming in. Um, that's not supposed to happen right? Naruto asked. No, definitely not. Where's the water heater? You did memorize this place right? Yeah, it should be in the basement with a breaker box. Well let's figure this thing out. Tamari said walking out and downstairs to find the basement. So which door is it? She asked. This one over here. Naruto answered leading her off to a door away from where everything really is. They went down the steps with Tamari leading the way down, and with their combined weight and how old the stairs were they broke some of the steps and then the entire stairway fell after they got off. In time. You know what I'm gonna say right? Tamari asked looking at the broken staircase. Yeah, it'll be the first thing on the checklist to do this week. Naruto answered also looking at their exit. They both turned around to see that there wasn't one water heater, but two, and one clearly stating that it only supported the master bathroom. Well I'll be damned, two heaters. Naruto set and he walked up to the other heater and put the back of his hand against it and found that it too was also cold. Well the heater's cold which makes sense and that's a good thing. Naruto said. Why is it a good thing? It's not functioning the way it should be. Tamari replied. It's good because that means we don't have a stupid heater that's hot but only putting out cold water. Naruto said. Oh, I see what you're getting at. So once we find an expert it won't be too much of a hassle to fix the thing, since it isn't acting strange, other than not putting out hot water. Correct, so I'll ask Bachan if she knows anyone in town who can help out and we'll get it fixed, but I guess for now you'll just have to use the master bathroom, unless you like freezing cold showers and stuff. Naruto said walking back to the staircase like it was still there. Well Lady Luck just loves bending me over and fucking me huh? Tamari thought before turning to see Naruto walk to the staircase without a care in the world. You know the stairs aren't there right? She asked and Naruto froze in his tracks, since it may have slipped his mind with the water heater taking priority at the moment. Oh uh, nope, I remember. He said trying to seem normal, but Tamari could see through it. Sure, guess that's why you just walked up to it like it's still there huh dummy? She teased. I'm not a dummy. Naruto snapped back. It's a joke Naruto relax. He, for someone who's pulled pranks their whole life I'm surprised you didn't see the humor in my comment. She said very pleased being able to out Naruto Naruto. Whatever. He grumbled not liking someone outdoing him in his field of expertise. He'd sweep her off her feet and jump out of the basement. Karama piped in. Why? Thus do it idiot, you don't have time to waste talking. That's a little weird though isn't it? Why are you still here talking to me? Goo. Karama roared. Alright alright I'm going. But Naruto turned to find Tamari already jumping out of the basement and walking towards the rest of the house. Bam. Idiot. Shut up. Did you say something to me? Tamari asked from the kitchen. No, it was nothing. Naruto replied as he jumped out and began grumbling to himself, stupid fox almost getting me in trouble. Not my fault you can't control your damn mouth. I'm gonna kill you one day you know. Ah, I'd like to see you try. Karama roared laughing before disconnecting the link. Dumb fox. Naruto muttered as he walked into the kitchen to see Tamari salivating over what Naruto cooked. Oh looks like you found my surprise. Naruto said. Surprise? Are you throwing a party I don't know about? She asked taking her eyes away from the food, but the memory stayed and went straight to her stomach which announced its presence. No, I don't really do parties. I made this for you. It's your first night here and I figured I'd cook something up nice for you. I found an old cookbook on Suna delicacies and ones from here that I know about and cooked them up. Damari was shocked at how sweet this young man was. All she's really seen was this goofy idiot who can become very serious during battle, and now she's seeing the softer, more thoughtful side to him. Naruto I don't know what to say. Well for starters you can tell me how the food is. This is the first time I've cooked stuff like this. 
Naruto said getting the plates to the table, and it was full meal that left both blonde satisfied. Am, I'm gonna get fat if he cooks like this all the time. I need to learn this stuff before going back home so Gara and Kankram will actually eat something I make. Tamari thought. So how was it? Naruto asked breaking her thought process. Fantastic, I've never had food this satisfying. Thank you Naruto. She replied with a soft smile on her face. Well that's great news. I'll have to teach you how to cook these, so when I'm on missions and you're home, you don't have to buy takeout all the time. I still need to tell him about me traveling every two months. Fuck, how do I break it to him? Hey Naruto. Tamari asked trying to get his attention. What's up? He replied as he washed the dishes. There's something I still need to tell you about our wedding arrangement and it being put off. Tamari said. This made Naruto stop doing the dishes and come back to the table. Look, Lady Tsunade and Baki-sensei came to the agreement that I'll live here for two months, then live in Suna for two months, and keep rotating between villages until a Kazikage is appointed. Tamari started. So you won't always see me like you may have originally been told. She continued and stopped to see how Naruto is taking this, and she couldn't really get a red on Naruto. All he did was breathe out before collecting himself and put up a quick and small smile, this one was fake, but why? Why was he giving her a fake smile? It's okay. I figured you'd want to get away from me in this situation. What? I know you don't want to be in this situation, and with it being me and my condition or whatever you want to call it, I know it isn't ideal for you. You've been forced to a foreign land to marry some guy you don't know, start a family, protect a new village you didn't grow up in and pretend everything's alright. I get it. You don't have to sugarcoat it and act like you're okay with everything. Naruto said going back to finishing the dishes leaving Tamari shocked at what he said. What the actual fuck was that? Tamari thought to herself as this conversation turned in a direction that Tamari didn't even know existed. Whatever I'm too tired for this shit. She said getting up, but not before having the last word, thanks for the meal anyways, it was great, jackass. And with that she stormed off to one of the guest bedrooms and slammed the door shut, and her mind went into overdrive, trying to analyze what the hell just happened. Unbeknownst to either of the blondes a tall white-haired man walked in and heard the last words Tamari hung on Naruto. Whistle noise already going at each other huh? And not in a good way. You might want to make sure that no one outside the house catches wind of this, or things could get ugly politically. Jiraiya said walking in the kitchen after Tamari slammed her door. What do you pervy sage? Naruto asked stopping his work on cleaning the dishes. Well I was going to check in on you, and it seems like I came at a good time too. He said, want to talk about it? The sage offered as Naruto nodded and walked outside and sat on the grass portion of the backyard. Jiraiya plopped down next to him and sighed before laying back and looking at the stars. They sure are beautiful huh? He said. Naruto didn't reply at first, since he didn't know what Jiraiya was talking about until he saw where the sage was gazing. Yeah, I guess they are. The blonde replied wrapping his arms around his shins and tucking his chin into his knees. So what happened before I came? The older man asked. Well I cooked dinner for her, she liked it, and then afterwards she told me she'd be rotating where she lives every two months. Ah, so you finally know. The decision was only made today, so she pretty much just found out today too. So what's the real problem? I know you're not in a love at first sight situation, so I know her leaving every two months isn't bumming you out. It just seems like she's only doing this to get away from me. It's no different than the beat who would attack me when I was younger. Nobody ever really wants to stay in my life, you and Bachan have exceeded the normal lifespan of a shinobi and will probably be leaving me soon enough, Naruto started before a fist collided into his ribs sending him across the yard. The stone-faced Jiraiya still had his fist exactly where he made contact with the Jinchuriki. What the hell was that for? Naruto yelled. Do you honestly think I'd purposely leave your life, or even Tsunade? How little do you think of me, yes I wasn't there for you all the time when I should have been Naruto. I know that and have come to terms with not being able to go back and fix things, but I'm here now and I'm not going to leave you. You're the closest thing Tsunade-chan and I have to a son, and she and I aren't married, and you and I aren't related, but we still consider each other and you as family. Gureya said getting up and standing over Naruto. You gotta look at both sides Naruto. She was forced I know. I get it alright, she was forced into this situation, but so was I. Naruto retorted. So then why are you acting like such a jackass? Jiraiya snapped back, if you know that she's in the same boat as you then have some compassion for the young lady, she left her home for crying out loud. She's swallowing her pride of being a sand shinobi and trying her best to come to terms of no longer being a full sand shinobi. You've got to cut her some slack and stop thinking that everyone that comes into your life is going to hurt you or leave you Naruto. When I had a meeting with her, Aunt Tsunade, Kakashi, Iruka, Tuchi and Am were there I saw what type of person she was kid. 
She's not the most emotional person so she isn't going to just show you everything. She's also a warrior who's been in this business longer than you have and is all of a sudden being forced to switch the team she plays for. No, she definitely doesn't want to be in this situation, but she's at least going to give it a shot and she's gonna show it in her own way. Naruto just stayed on the ground listening to the man he saw as a father figure. I'm sure she'd rather go through life and fall in love the way you're supposed to, but that's not the hand she was dealt and she's trying her hardest to come to terms with that and adjust. You need to do the same. Your infatuation with Pinky needs to die right now. You're an engaged man set to marry what most people in the hidden sand refer to as their princess. Look all I'm saying is if you just trust her and open up to her, give a chance to prove herself she will make sure you're happy and have nothing to fear anymore. You just have to give your trust to her and wait to see what she does with it because she's doing the same thing and based on what I heard coming in, you're not off to a good start. I'm sure that lazy classmate of yours, Shikamaru is looking better than you right now. Promise me you'll give her a chance. Jiraiya said. Naruto took everything in and decided that doing what his mentor said would probably be the best thing. Fine, I promise I'll give her a real chance. Naruto said. Good, now get some rest, you've got an interesting couple days ahead of you. Jiraiya said as he and Naruto clasped forearms and lifted up the blonde. Why do you say that? He asked to Jiraiya who began walking inside to leave. Just trust me when I say women don't forget shit like this. And just like that Jiraiya was gone. Naruto dusted himself off and went back inside and upstairs thinking about everything Jiraiya told him. He stopped once he came to Tamari's door and knocked softly on it to see if she was awake, but there was no response. He really didn't want to do what he was about to, but he quietly and slowly opened the door and stepped in, and the only sound he heard was the soft breathing of Tamari. Naruto walked up to the Sand Princess to see if she was awake and just ignoring him, but seeing the tear stains on her cheeks and pillow, told him she cried herself to sleep. Guess she really doesn't like showing her emotions all that much. Naruto turned and left the room closing the door quietly, so he didn't wake her up, but unknown to him, she was awake and only pretended to be asleep, since she didn't want to face him like this, and once she heard the doors to the master bedroom close, she began quietly sobbing again. It took a while for Naruto to sleep, but eventually he fell into a slumber still thinking about what the perverted sage said to him. Next morning. Naruto woke up early as usual and began making some breakfast, and Tamari eventually woke up and made her way downstairs after showering and getting dressed. She still didn't know how to feel about what happened last night and she didn't get much sleep, so she woke up pretty cranky to say the least. Once she came downstairs she saw Naruto with his back to her and she was mentally debating about whether she wanted to talk to him about last night or whether she just wanted to try and forget about it and move on with the mission at hand. After a few seconds she came to her conclusion on with the mission. She turned on her heel and started to walk out and try to find food elsewhere, she just didn't want to talk to Naruto after last night. Naruto heard her footsteps and tried to call out her name, but she was out the door and gone before he could say anything important. All he got in response was the door closing followed by the gate shutting. Bam, Curvy Sage was right. I've got a long day ahead of me. With Tamari. Tamari really didn't know where she was going, she just knew she didn't want to be in that house she's supposed to call home. After wandering around the village for a couple hours she ended up walking right by the Hokage Tower and decided to go in and tell Tsunade of her decision. After walking the winding halls leading to the most powerful ninja in the village, she came face to face with a door leading into the Hokage's office. Tamari knocked on the and was soon given permission to enter. Once the young blonde stepped inside Tsunade was a little surprised to see her this early in the day. I'm surprised you're here this early in the morning. Is everything okay? Tsunade asked. I think I'd like to start my two month stay back home in Suna. Tamari said looking the Hokage in the eyes. Tsunade saw something else in her eyes and put down everything and leaned back into her chair. All right what did that idiot do? I'm sorry. Tamari replied confused. Naruto, the idiot, what did he do or say to you? The busty blonde asked now crossing her arms under her breasts. Tamari immediately diverted her gaze not wanting to recall the events. Tsunade let out a sigh but sitting up in her chair and gesturing for the other blonde to have a seat. Tamari wasn't going to refuse the gesture and sat down and stayed silent for a while before she decided to divulge the information. Last night I told Naruto what I was told at the Raymond stand and he thinks that somehow I'm using this as a way to get away from him because of his condition or whatever. He says he understands that I'm being forced into something that's not of my choosing. Being forced to leave my home country, pledge my allegiance to another, marry a stranger, start a family and whatnot. This was all after he cooked an amazing dinner and was winning points in my book and then all of a sudden he does a 180 and pretty much makes me feel like shit. So afterwards I thanked him for the meal and called him a jackass and cried myself to sleep, woke up this morning and wandered around the village before ending up here. Tamari explained. 
the only thing Tsunade could do was rub her temples in frustration, since this was definitely not the way she wanted to start her morning. Well I can't say I'm entirely surprised. This is one of those things where you kinda have to take that punch on the chin and still be there for him. In his own way he's frustrated about the situation which I'm sure he hasn't openly said. But you know that Naruto, as far as I know, has a crush on Sakura. Tsunade replied. No I didn't know he had a crush on Pinky. Well he does, and I think he's frustrated that he won't get the chance to chase after what he wants in the realm of love like everyone else in the village can. I think deep down he knows it's the same for you, but he's just so focused on him right now because that's all he's had that he doesn't really know what he's supposed to do, how he's supposed to process information and go about it. You got to remember that boys don't mature as fast as us ladies, and with your upbringing you matured very quickly, whereas he didn't, and he still has some room to grow. Tsunade explained. Just don't take everything personal, he's got a lot more going through his head than I'm sure he's letting on, and definitely more than you realize. Just be patient with him. That's really the only advice I can give you. Whenever he pisses you off, cause I know he will, just try and restrain yourself and figure out why he said or did something to upset you. And of course like you've already heard just be there for him. The best way you can start to show trust is to give it away and open yourself up to him. Maybe you two need to just sit down and talk. It doesn't have to be the fake sunny day bullshit. Talk about your fears, what you want out of life, where you'd like to see this marriage go, just try to have a very deep conversation with him and see what happens. Tsunade finished. Thank you Lady Tsunade. Tamari said standing up and bowing. Tamari turned to leave, but before she could walk out Tsunade called out to her again. Tamari, one last thing. Yes. If you ever need to talk to someone about boys or stuff like this feel free to walk on in and visit me at my home okay. I know you don't like the situation and I'll do my best as a Hokage to try and make things go as smooth as they can for you okay. That's very generous of you Lady Tsunade, thank you for your support and help. It means a lot to know that you're in my corner. Tamari replied bowing once more before leaving to try and talk things out with Naruto, but by the time she returned to her new home, he was nowhere. She walked inside to the kitchen to see the breakfast he had made was still out and a plate with her portion was still sitting on the table waiting for her. There was also a note that her fiancé wrote for her. So he wants to talk things out and apologize huh? She thought before she sat down thinking about how things would play out and what she'd like to say while she ate her meal. I really got my work cut out for me huh? Tamari spent the rest of the day exploring the village since her family left shortly after Tamari was told of the two-month exchange program she'd be doing. While roaming around she kept noticing some people glaring at her, and she knew why, but she wasn't going to give them the time of day or attention they wanted. After finally getting around the whole village she decided to go to the desert in the backyard and restart her training. Having the sand beneath her feet made her feel like she was training back home. Deep down she knew it wasn't true, but she let herself feel like for the time being before coming back to reality. When she finished it was sundown and she was covered in sweat, something she isn't really used to, since the dry air in the desert pretty much evaporated their sweat. The humid air in Kanoha would definitely be something she'd have to get used to. After taking a shower outside she wondered how she wanted to go about talking with Naruto. As her mind wandered to the how part she figured out the where part while looking at the onsen. After cleaning off Tamari headed in to change into a two-piece black bikini that showed off her curves and bust in the most complimentary way possible. She came back out and began relaxing in the onsen out back. Naruto came home a little after she began winding down in the onsen and went upstairs to shower before finding food for dinner. Tamari you home? Naruto called out but got no response. Is she not here? He asked as he searched all upstairs and found nothing. He ended up seeing the steam coming up from the onsen out back and saw that she was relaxing there. Naruto changed into swim trunk and headed out back. Hey I was looking for you. Mind if I join? He asked. Sure, I was actually hoping to talk with you so this is perfect. Tamari replied turning to face him and watching him join her in the warm water. There was an awkward silence both wanting to apologize but not knowing the right way. I'm sorry. They both started before blushing and clamping up. Tamari I'm sorry about how I reacted to the news you told me last night. I was completely in the wrong. You have every right to be mad and keep your decision about starting your two-month rotation. All of this shit just hit me like a meteor, I thought I could be like a normal person and find love, but here comes political bullshit to ruin the plans. I've just never had a normal life, and I thought finding love could be the one thing in my life that could be normal but nope. Naruto said. I hear you on that note. I think that's one thing we both got in common. I grew up as a Kage's child, so everyone feared me, and on top of that being Gara's sister doesn't help my case any. I know I don't show my emotions much, but I was also hoping to find love on my own, but politics ruins it just like it has most of my life. 
I know what you've been through Naruto, and I sorry you're being forced into this. Tamari said. Luck of the draw I guess. Naruto sighing out and putting his arms on the edge of the onsen. Tamari didn't know what came over her, but seeing him open up to her touched her. This was a side of Naruto that people never see, but he trusted her enough to open up to her. Tamari swam over to him and sat in his lap while looking at him with compassion. Naruto was a little shocked but saw the look in her eyes, and he was blown away at just how beautiful she is. Something was drawing them together, and before either one knew what happened their lips locked, and Naruto wrapped his arms around her on instinct, pulling her close to him, which caused her to press her breasts into him, and she began grinding on him. From there they went off hormones and instinct. Naruto stood up and Tamari's response was to wrap her arms around his neck and her legs around his waist, while he moved one hand to her back and the other one wrapped underneath her ass. Naruto began walking back to the house carrying his future wife. Once inside Naruto moved his grip to the bottom of her thighs and slammed her up against a wall. Tamari moved her hands to his hair and was pulling him closer, not wanting to let the kiss end. Unfortunately for her Naruto had other plans and backed off but dove right into her neck and began sucking on the artery and lightly biting her neck, making her gasp and moan out while her hands curled into balls with his hair in them. She began bucking her hips as well and she could feel his bulb stiffening. Then Naruto, wait. She said and he backed off looking at her with concern. I want to continue but I think it's better if we wait to do that. She said caressing his face with a soft smile adorning her own. I understand. Naruto said putting her down and looking at her. That doesn't mean I don't want it though. Just not yet. Maybe take me on a few dates and win my heart and then we'll do that okay big boy. She said gripping his bulge at the last part, winking at him then walking away swaying her hips a little extra and untied her top and bottom and let them fall by the string to the floor. You know I could use a hand to get those hard to reach places in the shower. She said walking up the stairs and disappearing. Naruto stood still not really understanding what just happened, but his brain went into overdrive and he flew up the stairs pinning her to the wall outside the master bedroom, getting her to squeal a little. You're such a fucking tease you know that. He asked. Yup. She said smirking at him and rubbing her thigh on his crotch. What you gonna do about it? She challenged. Guess you'll have to wait and see. Naruto said turning around and walking to the bathroom. Tamari didn't move at first blushing a little, but got going once she heard Naruto call out. Didn't you need help with something in the shower? Yeah. Well come on, I've got the water running. Naruto replied from the shower. I was just teasing you you know. C replied a little embarrassed. I know but I'm not. But you're naked. I ain't. What's your point, you're naked right now. I'll give you that one. Not like you had a choice. He replied but felt a chill go down his spine. What was that? She coldly asked. Nothing, nothing at all. That's what I thought, anyways I'll shower in the guest bath, but I can spend the night in the master bed if that's okay. She replied. That'd be nice to Mari. He said smiling which in turn made the other blonde smile. Good, I'll see you in a couple minutes. She replied happily walking to the bathroom. I can't believe all of that just happened. She thought to herself blushing like a tomato. What the hell happened to me? It was like something possessed me and I actually kissed him, and oh my god he's so strong. Picking me up with ease and carrying me and his fucking cock felt enormous. He'll split me open if it goes in me. She thought only increasing her blush. The whole time Naruto spent the shower relaxing and smiling a bit thanking Jiraiya mentally. He opened himself up to Tamari not knowing what would happen and it resulted in her kissing him, which led to them making out. Then she grabbed his crotch while also accepting the invitation to spend the night in bed with him. Unbeknownst to anyone but Tamari, she was a bit of a closet pervert. She read erotic novels and knows exactly what to do when the time comes for her and Naruto to consummate their marriage. She has spent countless nights fingering herself to sleep off of mere fantasy of being brutally fucked into a mattress and breaking the bed from. Tamari had some normal fantasies like being fucked in her ass, getting creampied, and having lesbian sex. Some of her other fantasies though aren't what most women think about when getting themselves off. Tamari would love to have a threesome with two guys and a threesome with one of girl, double penetration, triple penetration, double pussy and double anal fucked, rolla play. Some BDSM where she gets totally dominated and treated like a whore, she wants to cry and choke on the biggest cock she can find. Some of her kinkier fantasies include public sex, futinari, fucking her hokage tsunade, voyeurism, pregnant sex, getting bound and spanked like a schoolgirl. Needless to say Tamari is going to make sure Naruto has his hands full with her kinks and she hopes he's up for the challenge. After cleaning off Tamari headed to the master bedroom in her black nightie that came down to mid-thigh along with a black thong style panty that really complemented her curves if she wanted to take off the nightie. 
her hair was down and she strode into the room with the confidence of the baddest bitch in town, and when she opened up the doors to the master bedroom, Naruto's jaw dropped seeing how beautiful she looked. You looked amazing to Mari. He said from under the sheets. Thanks, you look pretty good too. She replied blushing a little before walking up and getting under the covers with him. Both of them were looking at each other while resting on their sides to talk some more before going to sleep. Thanks for opening up to me and trusting me enough to do that. It means a lot. She said blushing right before kissing him on the cheek. So if I open up more I get more kisses and stuff? Naruto jokingly asked. Maybe. Tamari said dragging out the word. What does that mean? Naruto asked. It means that I may keep doing stuff like kisses and what not for you if you open up to me and try to make things work with me. She replied with a small giggle. That's blackmail. Well I mean I could stop teasing you, but then that means I'll cover up and not let you get a peek at me. Kamari said as she smoothly snaked her hand under the covers to lightly squeeze his cock, and she leaned in to whisper to him, but I'm sure you'd much rather I tease you and let you see my body, instead of not giving you anything. Damari then rolled to her other side and backed her ass up against his cock and playfully rubbed her ass against him. Naruto softly groaned knowing he was in for an interesting life. Damari giggled before removing her ass and was content with her teasing for the day. Can I ask you something, Tamari? Sure. She replied rolling back over and looking at his cerulean eyes. Why are you so I guess the word I'm looking for is proper yeah. Why are you so proper outside, but today you just seem like a different kind of person when it's just us, how come? Like I've already told you, I'm willing to make this work if you are, and I might as well have fun with it. Plus when a girl likes a guy she tends to be flirty, I'm just really flirty is all. She explained. Wait so you like me? I mean you are cute, you have a nice body, and when you want to be you can be sweet, plus you having a big pack of gay helps. She said smirking. What does my dick have to do with anything? I'm what you'd call a size queen. If I'm gonna sleep with someone they better have a big pack of gay for me, otherwise I won't be turned on. Now there are exceptions like if he has a good personality then how big he is won't matter as much, but he better know how to pleasure a woman. She explained. So because I have a good personality and a big pack of gay you're gonna be flirty with me? He asked. That, but our countries depend on us coming together so I want to have fun. She said. Right, okay. I'll give you more things to enjoy, but you've got to take me on that date first okay. She said. Got it. Naruto replied with a smile before rolling over and getting comfy. Night Tamari. Good night Naruto. Next morning. Tamari was the first one to wake up and decided that she wanted to return the favor of cooking a meal and went out to get some ingredients for her favorite breakfast because she also wanted to see what Naruto thought of her cooking and the food itself. When she woke up she saw that Naruto had rolled a bit in his sleep since his chest was pressed against her back and his arms were wrapped around her making her feel safe and protected. The kicker though was she noticed he kicked the sheets off and his enormous python was just hanging out in between them. The day he fucks me is the day I can die in peace. She thought as she slowly got out of bed making sure to not wake him. After getting out of bed and seeing he was asleep, she undressed her nightwear and left it on the bed before going into his closet and finding a shirt that was clearly too big for her. Let's see how he likes the surprise. Tamari thought as she put on the orange shirt with a black yuzu swirl. As she headed downstairs she could feel the AC blow underneath her shirt and cool her pussy. While Tamari was in the kitchen she was dancing and cooking, just enjoying the fact that her second night was leaps and bounds better than her first one. As she danced to her heart's delight and cooked the smell wafted its way upstairs into the master bedroom, waking up the fox container. As he made his way downstairs in a black shirt with an orange yuzu swirl, he could hear Tamari humming to herself while hearing her operate some of the kitchen. Morning. He sleepily said. Good morning Naruto. She sang out smiling back at while still shaking her hips in rhythm to her own beat. How did you sleep? He asked from the kitchen entrance. I slept wonderfully, thanks for asking. She replied as she strolled up to him and pecked him on the lips before turning around and heading back to finish cooking the food. Go ahead and pick a seat, food should be done in a couple minutes. She said not looking back trying to focus on the meal. Naruto found his spot and couldn't help but smile seeing her dance and pretty much put on a private show for him. He didn't even notice that she took his favorite shirt and was wearing it. I hope you don't mind me using one of your shirts. She said. I didn't even notice. He said, it looks good on you though. He complimented. Oh, thanks Naruto. She said blushing a little, yours looks nice as well. Once Tamari finished she set the plates down and sat down next to Naruto to get an up-close reaction. Naruto had never seen this food before, but it looked amazing, and he was eager to see how well it tasted. With only one bite Naruto's eyes widened, and he couldn't believe how well of a cook she is. This shit is fucking incredible. It might even be better than Raymond. No it couldn't, but damn is it a close second. Well whatcha think? 
she asked eager to find out. It's incredible, it's some of the best food I've ever had. He said right before devouring the rest of it. You didn't happen to make more did you? He asked. On the stove. She replied smiling, glad you enjoyed it. It's my favorite dish from back home. Maybe you can teach me some of what you like to cook and I'll teach you some things of what I like. Well it sounds like a deal, since I don't have anything planned for today, and Kakashi Sensei gave us the day off so I'm game he said grinning and leaning on the counter. Good, I suggest we get clothes on that we don't mind getting dirty. She said. Alright then after we finish eating I'll clean up and we can get started. Naruto said. Perfect. The Sand Princess replied. After eating and chatting they finally finished with Naruto showing off his famous appetite. Tamari went ahead to find some old clothes she didn't care about getting dirty, and she tied her hair up into space buns and came back in a grey sports bra and grey running shorts, ready to getting cooking. Naruto saw her come back in the kitchen dressed in athletic wear and he was once again blown away by her beauty. Wow, is there anything you don't look good in? He asked. Hey Mo. She quickly replied. Somehow I doubt that. Naruto replied as he walked by her and slapping her ass. Eep. Tamari squealed and covered her mouth quickly not knowing what sound she just made and blushing up a storm, never guessing that Naruto would be bouncy enough to tease her back. Did he really just get back at me? Naruto was smirking like a fox as he went upstairs and changed into a short sleeve muscle shirt and shorts with full intention to get back at Tamari because no one ones up Naruto and gets away with it. As he came back downstairs and into the kitchen, it was Tamari's turn to be wowed at how he looks. Oh so he wants to play that game huh? May the best shinobi win. So I looked around the kitchen and I think we need to do some special shopping for what I need to cook. I'm gonna go get my welcome kimono on and I'll be ready to head out, why don't you make sure you've got everything you need okay? She said heading back upstairs. If he keeps this up I'm gonna end up sleeping with him before the week is up and it's only Wednesday. After scoping out the kitchen Naruto did need to get some more groceries if they were gonna be cooking all day. Damari came back downstairs in her kimono that she wore when she first arrived. How's your situation? She asked. I'm gonna need to get some stuff as well. How come you covered up? He asked. Well you're my fiancé so only you get to see me dress like that. Tamari replied. There's something else you know that. Naruto said smirking. Yup, now let's go shopping so we can get cooking. She said leading the way and swaying her hips going out the door. I think I'm actually falling for this woman and it's only been a couple of days. He thought following her lead. While they were out at the market they were able to find everything with ease and it must have been their lucky day because no one of the vendors hassled them for the price. To anyone who didn't know them they would just see two teenagers enjoying each other's company. They were just chatting about what they were planning on cooking and if there was anything else around the house they wanted to fix and some training they would like to get in. Once they returned home Tamari started by taking off her kimono and began dancing once she got in the kitchen like she did earlier. Once they put everything they needed on the island Naruto brought up a suggestion. Why don't we train for a little bit before getting to the food? I'm curious to see how I stack up to you. I haven't trained in a while and I could use a good workout. She said. Alright I'll meet you out back. Naruto said walking out back. Damari quickly ran upstairs to grab her big fan along with her two smaller ones that she sealed away in her forearms. After heading out back she saw that Naruto was stretching himself out getting ready. So how do you want to start this? She asked stretching. Well why don't we start with hand to hand before moving on to weapons and then ninjutsu. He suggested. Sounds good. Ready when you are. She said getting in her stance. Without even needing to signal the start the both charged in with Naruto throwing a right hook and Tamari ducked underneath and landed an uppercut to his abdomen and sent him in the air. Tamari smirked thinking she got one on him but he popped into smoke getting Tamari to bring up her guard but it was too late. Naruto swept her legs out from behind and brought his right leg up, ready to send it straight down at her, but the Kanoichi rolled out the way and jumped back a couple times to create distance. Nice clone and leg sweep, but I thought we were gonna wait on ninjutsu. She said dusting herself off. Thanks, that was a good dodge and uppercut you had, plus I made that clone before you came out and we agreed on the terms, so can you really blame me? The two once again started up with each one landing good shots, forcing them both to make sure they didn't stay close for too long. Tamari knows that Naruto prefers up close and personal fights, so her strategy is to get in and get out since she isn't using her fans just yet. After a solid 25 minutes of hand-to-hand -hand combat they moved to weapons with each one pulling out a kunai and began fighting. All you could hear for the next 15 minutes was steel clashing with steel as they went at it. For the most part up to this point they've been pretty even on the match, but it would change once they included ninjutsu. 
once they agreed to use ninjutsu Tamari immediately pulled out her big fan and created a sandstorm to buy her some time to think of a strategy, but Naruto being Naruto charged right through and came out the other end with a Rasengan ready to hit her. Now if Tamari wasn't as skilled as she is she may have suffered severe injuries, but thankfully she isn't hopeless and brought her fan up to block the jutsu, but the impact caused her to lose her grip on it, and it flew up in the air and came down on the grassy part of their yard and embedded itself in. The dirt. Back and forth they went with Naruto getting close to Tamari, but she always had a counter ready for him, and she made sure to keep her distance, since he becomes a more dangerous fighter when using ninjutsu up close the way he does. This continued for an hour and a half before Naruto got the win by tricking her with clones and getting behind her and putting a kunai up to her throat. Yield. He said. I yield. She replied putting her arms up accepting defeat. You're one hell of a fighter Naruto. She complimented getting him to crack a grin. Thanks, your wind style is no joke and you're much better at hand to hand than I originally anticipated. He replied. Well a ninja's best weapon is the element of surprise. She said grabbing her fan and walking back in the house with her future husband. So how do you want to go about cooking? He asked. Well first I'm going to go take a shower just to rinse off and then I'll come back. Tamari said and disappeared up the stairs to clean off. Naruto took this opportunity to also get rinsed off but chose to use the outdoor shower they had. If Tamari had looked out the window her shower had she would have seen her husband to be naked in all his glory washing himself, which would have been enough for her to rub one out really quick. But she didn't look and focused on getting the sand, sweat and dirt off of her so she could cook properly and not get the food dirty. Naruto got done cleaning off much quicker than Tamari and decided to tease her a little bit and left his muscle shirt outside on purpose and waited for Tamari to come back down. Once she made her way down the stairs in the same shirt she had on earlier, she was given the surprise of seeing Naruto's muscular build, waiting for her to gaze upon it. Naruto smirked seeing her practically drool over him, and it made his chest swell with pride, knowing a woman was finally appreciating him. Yes, Naruto was falling in love much quicker than he could have anticipated, and he wasn't going to complain. You just love to one-up me huh Foxy-kun? She sarcastically asked. New nickname huh, I like it. He thought before replying, yeah, it's kinda my thing you know. A shit-eating grin was plastered on the Jinchuriki's face knowing he was getting points in his favor. He's really going to make it hard for me to not fuck him before I leave at the end of the week. The princess thought to herself as she decided to get some payback and strolled up to him swaying her hips and spinning on one foot when she got close to him and back her ass up to him while her arms went up around his neck to bring him closer and she began grinding on him to show him who was in charge. Naruto's instinct was to grab her waist where it curves in and pull her closer, and this made Tamari get hot under the collar, feeling his strong hands take possession of her. Before he could do anything else though she got out of his grasp while still moving her hips and decided to go for the knockout by taking off the shirt and revealing that she wasn't wearing a bra. Naruto's face became extremely red with steam coming out his ears. Tamari just walked up to him pecked him on the lips and began grinding on him again causing him to get a nosebleed that sent him to the ground where he was twitching, not knowing if he was dreaming or not. I win this time foxy cun. She thought giggling at his antics before putting her shirt back on. Thanks for watching guys, I hope did you enjoy this video, if you do please leave a like, share and subscribe, also don't forget to drink water, take care bye.